Hey there everyone, I'm Dust Bunny Avenger, and if you're new to the channel, welcome to Slackers Undercover. If you like what you see, don't forget to slap that like button, bash that big ol' subscribe button, and tickle that little bell icon to make sure you never miss out on any of the awesome. What's up everyone, Dust Bunny Avenger here from Slackers Undercover, and welcome back to Rain Swept. Now, as always... Just a fair warning, this game contains depictions, images, and story pertaining to murder, suicide, and trauma, which may be disturbing for some viewers. There's, there's, there's a lot of craziness, so just heads up on that. You want to get caught off unawares. Let's get into it. Continue our game into the darkness that we've been falling into. Been a crazy world for Detective Stone lately. Yeah, this was just after uh, catching up from our last episode. Uh, essentially, there was a fire. He was caught running around nude, having. Well, not nude. <laughs> running around in his pajamas, having a wild dream. He's back, so kind of a weird night skip thing into this, but. Let's check our journal, which is in button. Did nothing there. Okay, I don't remember what we were doing. I don't remember what we were doing. Okay. Well, we're not at the hotel, so let's head on. Was it C? No, it was journal that I was supposed to do. Maybe I just saved it in an awkward spot. Oh yeah, we're on the quest to find Johnny, actually. Because he was the last suspect. The pictures he was taking. This is it. This is where he lives. Oh, detective, come in, please. How can I help you? Miss Brown, is Johnny home? Yes, he is. He just came in a minute ago. Or what is this about? We just want to ask him a couple questions. Just basic things, as always. Oh, alright. He's up in his room. I'll go get him. Make yourselves comfortable, please. Detective, where on earth were you today? And why do you look like hell? Amy, to be honest, I have no idea. I had the weirdest dream, and I'm not even sure if it was really a dream. I m might have sleepwalked into the woods. I'm not sure. What the hell? I'm not sure how to react to that. And the room? Any idea why I was on fire? I don't know. Maybe. I'm gonna go non-crazy. Maybe it was accidental. A short circuit. It was a good thing I wasn't in the room then. Hmm. Detective, you had nothing to do with the fire, right? What? Seriously? No, I didn't. Just making sure. Wait, oh god. Did I? I can't remember anything. What's taking them so long? I can't sit still. I'm gonna walk around. I hope Miss Brown doesn't mind me smoking here, but goddamn do I need one. Right now I'm on board with whatever makes you feel better. Got me to say the GD. I don't like saying G. Darn you and your smooth talking ways, Detective Stone. Oh, yep. I'm just a jittering if I go this way. It makes me feel better. I'm not a jitter. Ooh. I haven't eaten anything all day. We'll grab a bite once we're done with this. This might be a while. Any idea who that is? That's uh, Miss Brown's late husband. He died in the war, only a few weeks after Johnny's father was born. She was very young then. She had to take care of her family all by herself since. Mom says she opened up her shop days after his death, and no one else put food on the table. I'm assuming that's Johnny's parents. Yeah. 
What happened to them? They died some nine years ago in a car crash, apparently. It's just been Miss Brown and Johnny since. She's known to be strong, rigid woman around Pineview, but she cares a lot for him. Detective. Johnny's refusing to come down, but that's all right. You can go up and talk to him. He's busy with his photographs, you see. He's got a little place in the attic where he develops them. Thank you, Miss Brown. That's a lot of photographs. Johnny. You were there outside my hotel room, weren't you? What were you doing? Why did you click a picture, Johnny? I saw the smoke rising, and so I came over to see what had happened. I just wanted a photo, because it looked beautiful. And why did you go run, huh? Uh, Officer Watts began to shout, and I panicked. I, I don't know. I wasn't allowed to click photos. I was scared, so I ran. You dropped these photographs as you ran for the hotel. Recognize them? Yeah. What do you have photos of Chris and Diane in their house, Johnny? Huh? Were you spied on them? You've ever written down the things they said to each other in detail behind the photos? Why? I... Detective, look. There are more. There's so many more photos of them. Are you, the sp are you spying for the father? I've got photographs of other things around Pineview, too. It was only the past couple of months that I started taking Chris and Diane's. They, uh, they stood out, in contrast to the rest of Pineview. It shows in the photographs. Looks like an obsession to me, Johnny. Not obsession, just curiosity. Look at this one, Detective. They had that argument that day, but it was different this time. Hey there, you. Hey. Any luck today? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm amazed it's taking so long. Issues with documents, you know how it is. Oh, I know, it's so stupid. What do you mean by that? Nothing, I mean, it's just silly how much red tape there is. It's just a hotel, right? This isn't exactly easy, okay? Calm down, Chris. You start shitting on me and my work again and you expect me to calm down? What are you talking about? We're on the same page here. I'm as frustrated as you are. I don't... <sighs> Whatever. No need to act like a baby. <sighs> oh, pushed her. Oh my god. Diane, baby, listen to me. I don't know what happened. I'm so sorry. I would never, ever do anything like that again, okay? I'm so stressed out at work and I thought... No, it doesn't matter. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I don't know what to say. I, I know I, I know I don't... I don't know why I say the things I do, Chris. I don't know why I'm such a bitch sometimes. You didn't do anything, Diane. I just overreacted. I know, I know. Maybe I didn't mean it today, but I have before. I might tomorrow. I can't stop it. I don't know what to do. I don't want to make our lives unbearable, and I don't know what to do without you. Unbearable, oh love. We go around in circles. It's driving me insane. But when it's good, it's the best I've ever seen. I've ever been. Just for a little while. Everything's okay. I'm, I haven't ever told anyone this before. I haven't even admitted it to myself, but... There's something wrong with me, Chris. I'm so scared. There's nothing wrong with you, baby. Nothing at all. There is. Please, just listen. We're screwed up, Chris. The whole thing is screwed up. But I don't want to lose it, either. It's the only good thing I have. I know, I know, Diane. We'll make it work, I swear. I need help. We need help. We need. We can do this together. You're on your own. I know I'm going to switch again and validate all this and say horrible things again. I know that would be in my control. That might be uh, bipolar disorder. You need to see a doctor about that. Mental health is important. I just don't know if you believe me. Having an ex-girlfriend who had bipolar disorder. Trust me, I believe you. It is a switch. Not everybody, but some people, it's a major switch in their personality. I believe you, Diane. Of course I do. Look, look at me. We're going to fix this. You and me, we'll work on it. Our new project. I made you move here. This is my fault. 
We're gonna, we'll get help. It's gonna be okay, okay? I believe you. Okay. Oh my god, why didn't you tell anyone, Johnny? Why didn't you call the police? And why didn't you show us any of this earlier when we asked if we could add any more pictures you could help us? Johnny Brown, I'm arresting you on suspicion of... Wait, but... Detective? You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defense if you fail to mention. What are you... Granny! Granny! Well, why'd you have a, full, a room full of their pictures, Johnny? What were you planning? I wasn't planning anything. Oh, I have no rational choices. Don't lie! Detective. What? I... We, we should talk to... Ju Not right now, Blunt. There's no time. Where were you that night? I was home. I... I already, all these are non-rational questions. I think you're just mad. Why'd you do it? I... Answer me! Did someone ask you to kill him? Well? How did you get the gun, Johnny? Detective, I need to discuss something with you right now. I need to show you something important. What? Does it have to be now? Yes, now. Ask you with this case. You can't wait. Fine, but make it quick. Okay, what is it? We don't have much time. I can't let another suspect slip through my fingers. Nothing, Detective. You just need to calm down. What's gotten into you? You're just screaming at him and scaring him. You're not even letting him speak. You need to go easy. In any case, we have no solid evidence that it was him. What the hell's going on here? Who gave you the authority to use this room and to arrest the citizens of this town? It is kind of just a storeroom. It's just, it's just a storeroom. You've got some nerve, Officer Blunt. I am disappointed in you supporting such nonsense. Now go on and release Johnny. No, he's a suspect. Do not say another word, Detective. This is out of your jurisdiction. You were supposed to leave town this morning. But Johnny's the murderer. He's done it. He had a room full of their pictures. Is there anyone in this town that you haven't blamed yet? Yesterday you were after Father Smith. Half this town is involved, according to you. You even managed to burn down a room in your hotel. Who are you going to question next? Me? What are you really trying to do here, Detective? Have you been looking at this case objectively, or do you need to catch someone, anyone at all costs, even if they're in innocent? You're obsessed with the thought of finding someone that's responsible, even if you have to make it all up. There's no case here, Detective. It was murder suicide. I'm gonna let you pull my town into your mess, whatever your motivations may be. But then what's the hurry to close the case? Just because of the festival? Why the hurry to arrest Johnny? Has your arrogance blinded you? Did you even bother looking for evidence before arresting Johnny? Look at this. Miss Brown just came over to the station with it. Can you see what it is? It's a photograph. This was one of the photos in the room full of pictures, one that you conveniently missed. What can you see in the picture? Actually, that isn't Chris and Diana's house. That is Johnny's house. I don't know what this is. You talk so much, but you don't know shit. That's Johnny's house. Look at the time it was taken. That's when Mr. Willis heard the gunshot. Johnny lives about ten minutes away from Chris and Diane's house. I don't understand. How, how could he have been over at Chris's place and be at home at the same time to click this picture, huh? Well, you can't adjust the time on your cameras. I'm just saying... You can. How could he even click the picture of his own home at the same time as the shootings? I don't know. Exactly. You don't know what you're doing, Detective. Finally, you admit it. 
You've wasted everyone's time and energy. You should be happy. I'm just letting you walk after all you've done. Just get out of this town now. Just go. I think he has something to do with it. Because no sheriff I know is that nice. <laughs> I see they've given you a new room. What was his voice again? I see they've given you a new room. Maybe not. It's only temporary. It's just so they can dump my bag somewhere for the day. I'm not staying. Can't actually. Yeah, that's a pity. Jack's brought your car. It's been fixed. That's good. Okay, with Officer Blunt. She's waiting outside. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll just be a minute. No, it's not that. She's worried. I don't know what you want me to say or do, Doc. Talk to her. What about? What have you been carrying with you all these days? Tell her, please. It'd do you good to talk to a friend. I think you see her as a friend, right? Yeah, you could say that. Well, great then. And have a good drive back home. I hope we can meet again under different circumstances, hopefully. My sneezing. Ooh. Thanks, Doc. You take care, too. <sighs> I guess I should talk to her. Hey, Michael. So, you really leaving, huh? Which choice do I have? It's over. So what will you do when you go back? I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Oh. I really thought we were going to figure it all out. Even if it is murder-suicide, I wish we had some proof. Or some answers. I feel like I've come to know them over the past few days, and I, I know it's going sour towards the end, but... To kill themselves. I wonder what really pushed them to it. You think they did it? I don't want to, at least. I don't either. You know, my dad, he, uh... Hmm? Never really told you about him, did I? When I was ten, he killed himself. Got shot to the head. And I'm sorry, Amy. I was there when it happened. I ran down to see where the loud bang had come from. There he was, sat in his favorite chair with a gun in his hand. And Mother tried explaining it the best she could. He, he was sad, she said. I could barely make any sense of it at the time. Why was he unhappy? Wasn't our family enough? Did I not make him happy? Could I have done anything to change it? Of course, it was ten. What could I have done? I tried figuring out what led to his depression. For months, I went over his last days with us. I don't remember much, but I recall he changed in some ways during the last couple of days. I couldn't understand it then, and it just felt off. He didn't feel like the dad I knew, even though he acted it. Detective, the thing is, I don't know if you've already, if you've always been this way. I don't think you have. I think it used to be different. But the way you are, or have become, you remind me so much of him. You remind me of the way he changed during his last days. It feels the same. I was 10 then, and I was helpless. But I'm older now. I understand people. I'm a police officer, for God's sake. I can't. I can't let that happen again. I won't let it. Amy, I... What's wrong, Michael? Please. I need to know what's making you suffer this way. What happened to Abigail, Michael? Tell her. I think she deserves that much. Okay.
Okay. Abigail is... was my wife. God, it's hard to talk about this. It's to, to finally talk to someone. We met when we were at university. I'd sit in the library every day after classes, studying up on different subjects, buried in books. She sat at the same table at me as me once, but didn't say anything. I didn't either. I didn't really know her well. We saw each other in the hallways, we shared a class or two. Despite that, she stood out to me. She looked different from the rest. Like a sensible, balanced, mature person, you know? <laughs> that can be rare sometimes. That went on for a couple of weeks. She never said anything, nor did I. We just shared a table. But I'd become comfortable in her presence. That was rare, too. One day, I very uncharacteristically caught myself looking at her. So did she. Hi. Um, hello. You're a slow reader. I... what? I've been reading that book for weeks now. It's a dense subject, and, uh, yeah, actually, I am a slow reader. Why don't you take the book home with you? I like the atmosphere here. Hmm, I know what you mean. Me too. Do you want to take a break? Go somewhere? She was confident, understanding, and really, really patient. I love that. We, click we quickly became inseparable, often spending hours together doing our own thing without saying a word to each other. We didn't need to talk, plan, or do much to have fun together. Being around each other was enough. Her company was meditative. Being with me gave her the same feeling of peace and calm that she gave me. Obviously, a couple years after graduation, we were married. Nothing spectacular out of the ordinary happened leading up to our marriage. That's just the way we were. But that was bliss for us. We were a bedrock, a foundation for each other. She meant everything to me. Everything. Which is why I can't come to terms with what I've done. This year, on 7th of April, we were about to go out for dinner. We'd been married two years at this time. God. That's why you didn't want to get all dressed up like that. Hey, Michael, you ready to go? Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. I think I forgot something. I'll be right back. The phone rang. I should have never answered it. Then don't answer it. This is your memory, buddy. Sorry to call you at home. What's up? We just received a call from an informant. Apparently he has info that he wants to share about Alex. Where is he? He's near the intersection of 22nd and 9th Avenue. You're not going to go see him tonight now, are you, boss? I'm headed that way anyway. A couple of questions won't take any time. How about tomorrow? He could be gone by tomorrow, Warren. He could change his mind. Alex could find him out and try to silence him. It's just an informant. We have our first lead in months. Let's not mess it up. All right, I'll join you ASAP. Wait for me. Hurry up. Alex was suspecting a major case and had been trying to pin down for months. I was convinced he was the key to unlocking the case, but my boss felt I was getting obsessed and tunnel-visioned. He wanted me to give up on it and pursue other leads. Alex kept slipping away like a rat. After months of silence, there he was, a chance to make a breakthrough at last. You ready to go? I'll just be a minute, all right? Why now? Why are, where are you going? Something's urgent come up. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, I don't think this is unnecessary, honestly. I'm over here. I can run. We. You've been told to wait outside the cafe near the intersection at 22nd. I remember the color of the sky that evening. Pale peach, slowly telling orange. I need to walk slower, otherwise I can't remember my memories. be him. The rush in the streets, the traffic, the sounds, the lights. The whole place was so alive, vibrant. Part of me wanted to drop this and go back to Abigail, but I couldn't. I had to see the informant. The information was something, something. Dark side. 
That's totally not him. That must be him. That's also not him. The smell of coffee, the laughter, and the voices of the people drifting from the cafe. Standing there watching those people in there, happy, cozy, and warm, I realized I wanted that, not this. A speeding car broke me out of my daydream. Seconds later, I heard gunshots. I ran back to my car as fast as I could. It couldn't be. Of course not. Why did I bring her along, though? No, I was just freaking out. Everything would be fine. Getting back seems to take a million years, and a million thoughts filled my head. I remember looking at the sky. It looked the same. Abigail dead, my world fell apart. There was no reason for me to carry on. Alex had been in the area. He knew of me. He knew I was after him. He knew the car I drove. I had been careless, irresponsible, and she paid the price. I don't know if he thought I was in the car or just wanted to spite me. He just drove past my car and opened fire. But one thought stopped me from doing anything to myself. Find him. Make him pay. It was the only thing that kept me alive at that moment. I was back at work the very next day. I didn't dare allow myself the time to think about it. The informant had run away. I would have to start looking for Alex again, but that gave me purpose. I didn't get a chance to do that, though. They found Alex the next day, dead. He was killed in a shooting that broke out when a deal went bad. A meaningless death in a back alley. Fit for scum like him. But why now? Why not a day before? Why did he have to take Abigail away just one day before that? Just one day. And I took her there. I made it happen. I took her to the wrong place at the wrong time. I'd lost that purpose too, but I carried on for some reason, aimlessly. I kept coming to work every day. Chief asked me to take a few days off, but work was the only thing keeping me sane or sedated. I stopped going home and started staying at a motel. I didn't want to see that house again, not without her. I'd put myself completely into my work during the day, and at night I'd be so tired that I'd go to sleep right after work. I eventually stabilized. I got into a rhythm of living without thinking of her or anything. I managed to shut away all the thoughts and memories of her. It was the only way I could live. I slowly developed into a new life, an almost normal life. Work was all that mattered. Not thinking about her became second nature. I hadn't thought about her at all for months until I was sent here. There's so many reasons, small, beautiful, that I've buried inside and tried to forget. Moments, excuse me, not reasons. It hurts so much to think about how good it was. It's uh, scary to move on. Every day that goes by me moves me further away from the last time that I saw her. She keeps becoming a part of the past with every passing second. With time, I've forgotten so much that's happened. I only remember a few big moments. The other smaller moments have dissolved around them. They're like the, what are those small island, islands, archipelagos, you know? A few memories still sticking out in the sea. But every day, the numbers grow lesser and the islands become smaller, disappearing one by one. I'm scared of that. Soon it'll be one year since it happened, then two than ten. I'll move on. She'll become unimportant to my life. How is that right? It would be comfortable, convenient to move on, to feel better, but do I deserve that? How can I be happy after my actions killed her? She just wasn't my wife, you know? It isn't just my loss. She was her own person with her own life, and dreams, and ambitions, and I took all of that away from her. Michael, she knows that you loved her. It wasn't intentional. But she won't become unimportant to you. That will never happen. Believe me, that voice telling you that it was your fault, that you could have done something, you need to stop listening to it. She wouldn't want you to blame yourself, would she? Even then, I just miss
this just so damn much. I feel like I can't risk being happy anymore. I don't want to see what follows when you lose something good. The bad times don't invalidate the good, Michael. They're both real. I know what you mean. But I can't bring myself to live that. To live without a burden. You're right. You know, I wasn't always this way. I used to be different. I was never this impulsive. Never made decisions without thinking things through and considering every possibility. The way I am these days, that isn't me. It's only since I've come here. I feel I have no self-control. I need to find someone responsible to make someone pay. Anyone. To punish someone just because I never had a chance to. Because he couldn't. He never got a chance to. Of course. You have an epif ep ep epiphany there, Michael? What? Because he never got a chance to confront them, Amy. Who? The rain! The rain! Did it rain that night, Amy? Did it? I... I don't remember. I... Think. Try to remember. I think so. I think it did. Of course. There were no fingerprints on the gun. It was too cold. He was wearing... What? Oh no, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have. Wait, what's going on? What'd you do? I hope we're not too late. We need to go now. Wait, what's going on, Detective? I don't get it. No time to explain. Let's go. He was wearing gloves. It was too cold. It was rainy and cold. How many times did we try to open up the window when we stayed at the hotel and every time it was like, no, it's, it's too cold outside, it's raining, it's too wet, it's too cold. Johnny, no, wait! Stay away, detective. Johnny, you don't have to do this. I have to, there's no other way now. I didn't mean to, I really didn't. Let's go for, um, one. I know, Johnny. I know you didn't mean to. I was scared. I couldn't think clearly. I, I didn't mean to. That doesn't make a difference now, does it? It's done is done, and now I don't see any other way. I'm not that kind of person. I don't even get very angry. I can't believe I did such a disgusting thing. I hate it. She gave me the gun. Diane, I only wanted to give it... I only want to give it back to her. Why did she give you the gun? Why does it matter? I killed them, didn't I? She was screaming at me, get out. I lost my head. I know why you lost control, Johnny. Trust me, I know how it feels. How? What? How do you know about how it feels? I've made mistakes too. It wasn't my fault. I didn't mean to do it. And if I don't end it myself, they'll put me in prison for life with the death penalty. What's the point? You won't get the death penalty, Johnny. You were provoked. You were emotionally disturbed at the moment. You didn't go there with the intention of hurting them. No, I, I didn't. Then you have a case that's 10 years, probably less, considering your age. I'm 16. Johnny, your sentence won't be harsh. It could even be less than five years. That doesn't matter. How can I live with what I've done, even if they let me off easy? I'll never live with any of this. I can't forgive myself, so what's the point? Exactly. Think about your grandma. I do love Granny, but she turned a blind eye just like everyone else. Would she accept me after what I've done? Would she even look at me? Would she pretend I don't even exist? 
Anyway, what would she do with a grandson like me? She's better off without me. No, there's no point. Sorry, detective. Johnny, no! Officer Watts for the save. Okay, Johnny, I got you. You're safe now. You might have a little head concussion there because I slammed you to the ground, but at least you're alive. I'm so sorry. I... Don gave me the gun. She was scared. She was scared with the gun in the house. Chris and her would argue a lot. She said Chris was beginning to get angrier every time. Every fight was worse than the last. I didn't want to keep the gun with me. I felt uncomfortable. Horrible. That night after Granny had gone to sleep, I snuck out of the window. Oh, hey, Johnny, what's up? I is Diane home? Oh, yeah. Diane! Just a minute. So, what's up, Johnny? I'm gonna teleport into this chair. Uh, nothing, I, I just wanted to talk to... You know I'm taking Diane to Madagascar for a holiday. I just told her about it. She's pretty excited. Hence, the, the wine. That sounds great. Yes, Chris, what? Oh, hey, Johnny, what are you doing here? Diane, I... Why did you get that here for? What is wrong with you? Can't keep it anymore, Diane. I don't want to. Please take it back. Are you insane? Keep that shit in your pocket and get the hell out of here. Get out. Just go. You got that, Johnny? Johnny, what are you doing here? Come... Fighting again. I hate them. Leave them be, Johnny. Forget all about them. Come, let's go out and. No, I hate them. I'll kill them. I'll kill them both. Stop! What are you doing here? You put them up to this, haven't you? Yeah, go ahead. Blame me for this, too. Say that again. Stop it! Stop it! What did you say? Wow, uh, rough. You little shit, you see this gun? I'll put a bullet through your head the next time you interrupt me. Got that? Got that? Oh, that was a triggering moment for him. From a background that she did not know of. Diane! Oh wow, he was still alive. Diane! I'm so sorry. shots. I wish I could undo it all, but I can't. Put him in the car, officer. Um, good job, detective. Turns out you had it right all along. God, I'm exhausted. Well, who would have thought? We actually did it. We caught the person responsible. But Johnny... It doesn't feel good, does it? It doesn't. I don't know how to feel. I'm glad we got here in time. You gotta stay for a few more days, Michael? No, I don't think so, Ryan. Just tonight. I need to sleep so much. That's pretty. timing, man. I had to stretch too. Man, I 
haven't slept that well in ages. Never slept with a cigarette in ages. But wear something appropriate for today, something formal or black. Uh, something you could do with some coffee. What is my formal wear? That is formal wear. This is another day. No, we'll just go formal. We do party wear like, woo! We caught him! seen a murderer. Just because we caught one doesn't mean there's not another one lurking in the bushes. What's up, lady? My, my, my mouse? Mouse? Oh, I, need, I need to actually catch up to you to talk to you. I, um, okay. Talk to you behind this tree. It's fine. Hello, Detective. I heard what happened yesterday. It's quite hard to believe it, really. Johnny's always been such a nice, docile boy. I really don't understand how he could do that. I'm glad you stopped him from hurting himself, though. Anyway, are you on your way back? Yep, I'll be leaving Pineview in an hour or so. It was good meeting you, Mr. Stone. Come back here and stay with us any time. We'll be happy to see you again. Just make sure it's on vacation and not for work. Will do, Miss Patterson. Goodbye. Goodbye, tree. Goodbye, cow jumping over the moon. What's up, dude? I didn't catch you the other night. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, my old word weaving, crime solving friend. I heard what happened yesterday. It's impressive the way you talked him down. It's all a little crazy. This town will still take a while to settle down. And you, are you leaving today? I am, yes. No reason for me to hang around anymore. You're just gonna have to come back then if you wanna listen to my music. Before you leave, can you help me out one last time? I'd love to. I think the song is quite appropriate too. Here goes. I wake up this misty morning remembering the, the buried pain. The dream has passed me by like last night's. Well, chow mein. <laughs> Depends where you get your chow mein. I mean, let's be honest. The one that that makes the most sense is cold. Last night's cold rain. Like last night's cold rain. Perfect. Perfect. You haven't lost your touch, my friend. It's only been seven days. Like last night's cold rain. So poetic. Works with the misty morning part, too. Well, thanks as always. I hope we get to meet again someday. I'd love to hear you play all this. Take care now. Goodbye, detective. Maybe him talking about what happened kind of helped settle his mind a little bit, too. I mean, he slept better. That was the first time he slept well in, like, the seven days he's been here. Are we going to Central Street? Maybe. If not, I, I do kind of want to talk to everybody if I can. No flying cars, please. Someone I can talk to. Aspen Street goes back to. Do I want to go to Aspen Street? Where am I supposed to be going? <laughs> Meet Amy at Mark's Cap. Oh, yeah, I'm going the wrong way, man. I, I think. See, I'm on Aspen. Yeah, no, there's a main street over here. Maybe I'll swing by, uh... I can't, I can't talk to you guys. Fine. Those arrows are new. I wish they weren't new, but they were. They are. Hmm. Oh, yeah, the festival starts soon. It's the festival. 
Can't wait for the festival. I'll come back in a second. I don't remember what's down here. Cliffview. Garampo's probably setting up for the festival too, so I don't want to bug him. So that's where the missing bullet went. Outside from the open window, yeah. While grazing Chris's ear and knocking him out on the way. Correct. Damn, no wonder Mr. Willis didn't see anything once the final shot did wake him up. I'd already been around 15 minutes since Johnny had left the house. What a week has been, right? You're telling me. Here I was leading a quiet life in a quieter station, and I thought I was busy. The place is never going to feel the same again. Everything feels different. You know what really sucks, though? What? I don't know if they would have been able to or not. They never even got a chance to try and fix things, did they? Hey, you guys ready? Sleep well, both of you. But you should ask that. Shall we get going? Oh, I guess they actually would have put them in the ground by now, since autopsy and stuff. There would have actually been an official funeral held. Especially since it's not a murder-suicide anymore, they're... Yeah. We are gathered here today to pay our respects and to celebrate the lives of Christopher Green and Diane Miller. I really thought that was Father Smith for a second. A young couple whose lives were cut short by a tragic series of events. For that, we must accept responsibility and admit that as a community we have fallen short. That we have failed them. Chris and Diane moved to Pineview to start a new life together. They chose this place to settle down and follow their dreams. But they were made to feel unwelcome. We rejected them and shut them out of our community. Not by our actions, but our inaction. Not through harsh words, but by not speaking at all. And yet the number of people gathered here today shows that despite all of that, they touched our lives in some way. And we must remember that, to not underestimate the impact each one of us has on everyone that we meet. So reach out, speak of what bothers you, confront the darkness, and you do not have to do that alone. Remember that we can make a difference in each other's lives. Let's do our best to make sure it's a good difference. It's the very least we should have to expect from ourselves. I thought a ram tree was falling down, like, it's an omen. Are you Father Smith? Oh, it's the doctor. Now he has his voice close. I, I, I couldn't tell because he wasn't wearing scrubs. <laughs> you did a good job there, Doc. Thanks, Detective. I did what I could. Well, I'll need someone to take over with the church soon enough, though. Doubt Father Smith's going to come back anytime soon. And if he is, I expect you'll have a bit of trouble to deal with. Anyway, you look better today, Detective. I'm really happy to see you that. Yeah, I think I feel better. At least we're looking out from the past couple days. It wasn't easy at times. That's kind of my job, isn't it? Happy you took my advice. You're a good man, Michael. I wish you the best of your life ahead. I look forward to us meeting again someday, under different circumstances, preferably. Me too, dear. Me too. Goodbye, Doc. Maybe I'll come here and settle down. Oh my gosh, I have a bony ass right here. It's so... Ooh, it's a bony. Miss Brown? Oh, Johnny, why did it have to be him? Poor boy, it wasn't his fault, it was all mine. I turned a blind eye to everything, I let it happen. I thought I could make him forget. Don't blame yourself, blame yourself Miss Brown. Now it's about time I faced reality. I had my part to play in all this, and I need to accept that. Only Johnny had to pay the price. I regret that for the rest of my days. Miss Brown, I'm sure that Johnny's case will be considered as it should be. There's a case to be made here was completely responsible for his actions. It was vol voluntary manslaughter. I'm sure he'll be back home soon. You did what you had to do, Detective. Those poor souls. They only had you to speak up for them. Take care. Goodbye, Miss Brown. Don't worry, 
Don't worry, Detect... No, damn, damn, what was his voice? God, it's been a few days. Don't worry, Detective, I'll take care of her. I'll give her the support she needs in those hard times. She's been a strong person all her life, but I think she might appreciate a friend this time. I'm sure she will, Grandpa. There isn't much time before I join the others here, is it? Others where? Underground. Oh. Uh. So I got a little time to do what I can, you know? You've done a lot of good for Pineview, Grandpa. I think the people here really appreciate you. Of course they do. Anyway, you take care of yourself, son. If you ever feel lonely or something... If you ever needed someone to talk to, Grandpa's always here, right? All right, Grandpa. You're not that crazy. He's a nice dude. Detective. Hey there, Detective. How are you doing? How are you two doing? How's Audrey, Alan? Getting better and better. She'll be discharged from the hospital in a couple days. Can't wait to begin again. Mark. Back to the regular old life. Also, there's the pub to think about now that Alan's leaving. I, I think I'll keep it. It's part of this town's identity now and mine in a way. Maybe Lenny could take over full time. Ha, <laughs> you keep in the pub when you shut it down? I never thought this day would come. Well, there's a lot of days that I thought would never come. Good job on the case, Detective. I'm happy you figured it all out. The people of this town needed answers, if they acted otherwise. I think we can all slowly come to terms with our role in this whole tragedy and learn to live better. Glad I could help, Mark. Drive safe, Detective. See you soon. Goodbye. Is this, uh, Brad? No, it's Officer Watts. Hey, Detective. Oh, it is Brad. How you doing, Brad? I'm alright, I guess. I just miss Chris. I wish we'd stayed in touch. All a little too late, though, right? I guess it's just something I have to learn to live with. I'm glad you discovered the truth. It's tragic what happened, but... At least they were on the same side in the end, you know? I know what you mean. I'm gonna miss my buddy. Take care now, Detective. You too, Brad. Oh, and good luck with the wedding! Thank you, that reminds me. I was supposed to give you this. Invitation for the wedding. Think you can make it? I think so. I'll do my best to make it. Glad to hear it. I'll see you then. Take care. Goodbye, Brad. I'd be friends with the detective that figured out how my buddy was murdered. I mean, smart guy, and I mean, he stuck to it, which, you know, honestly, some of the other cops didn't. They were just gonna brush it on the rug. Hey, Michael. All good, Ryan? Yep, you heading back right now? Yeah, it's about time, I think. I get it. It's only been, what, a, a week? Man, it feels like a lifetime has passed in the last few days. It does, doesn't it? Great job on the case, Mike. Great job on the case, Michael. That was, uh, that was something. You saw a truce that none of us could. You kept an open mind even though the case looked shut. That's an ideal for me to pursue. I want to be able to do that someday. You did really well saving Johnny back there, Ryan. And considering the Chief's professionalism, it's up to you and Blunt to really take care of this department now. Thanks, Detective. Good luck back home. Come back here anytime you feel like it. See you, Ryan. <clears throat> Said your goodbyes, everyone. You ready to go? Yeah, I'm done. So what you gonna do when you go back? I've had to go home and set so many things straight. I have some friends I wanted to help. I have my parents. I haven't spoken to them in a long time. They've been worried sick. I need to tend to that. I need to move back to my own house. There's a lot to figure out when I get back. It's, it's about time. I think I'm looking forward to it, too. That's good. And after that, back to work. I think I'll take a little holiday. The past few days have been stressful. Looking forward to getting back to work and seeing old faces, but... I think a short vacation will do me good. That's great. Any ideas where? Somewhere less rainy and warm. <laughs> I don't blame you. And you? What are your plans? I've been thinking about the things that you told me. I 
think it's time I moved on to bigger and better things. I'd like to work in a bigger city. Maybe even yours. The way you talk about the work culture and the lifestyle. It sounds exciting. I think it's a very good idea. I'll put in a good word of the department back home. I think you'll do very well. I'd love that. Listen, Michael, about Abigail. Are you going to be okay when you get back there? I, uh, maybe. Maybe I'll get used to it. I don't know. I think I learned to live with it at least. I now feel grateful more than anything else. You give me a call if you need a friend, all right? Understood, ma'am. Take care now, Michael. Drive safe now, Mike. Bye, Michael. Take care of yourself, all right? I will. Well, see you too soon, then. I hope you do. What now? Coffee? What? Again, we just... The cafe's right behind us, right? I can smell it. All right, all right. Yeah, it's kind of how I am with coffee, too, if I can smell what I want. Speaking of, I kind of want coffee right now. Created by Armand Sandu. Probably butchered the pronunciation of his name. I apologize. A lot of sounds. Good thing. I don't want to have too many of the same sounds over and over. 2019 Frostway Interactive, all rights reserved. It's webgame.com.
I supposed to skip this? I don't know. it that is the full story my friends I rather enjoyed that I, I think that's one of the first like uh, one of one of, I will say one of the first I, I think I played one before uh, I think it was called radiant I haven't played too many narrative story adventure games like this but it was enjoyable it really was and the story I wouldn't have called that. I honestly think it, for a while, I think it was Father Smith, so, and with everything was going on, I wasn't entirely sure. I mean, there was technically a suicide at the end there, but after what had happened, I guess Chris just couldn't take what was going on anymore, and he was emotionally, emotional and stuff like that, it's just, um, <clears throat> not to do a PSA or anything, but if you think you got issues that might be leaning towards the whole suicide thing, or you think you need help with that, reach out to somebody. There are places online, there's people you can call, there's all sorts of programs and stuff to talk to people for for mental health. Mental health is important. It's, it's hugely important. I, I'd, I'd say it's as much if or not more important than actual physical health because, you know, healthiest man in the world, if you don't believe it to be so, it won't be so. You know, your, your ability to live and walk through your day and do your day-to-day -day job and live and interact with people and stuff, that's hugely, hugely important to have and to be able to do. It's, man, I, I, speaking from someone who's had a couple mental health moments you know I years ago I got divorced and went through a hell of a depression and it took its toll until I finally almost did something very rash myself and realized I, when you reach one of those moments of like what the hell am I doing um, before you talk to someone, don't get to that point, because it's dangerous, don't risk it, you're more important than that, so that said, very much enjoyed this game, thank you Armand Sandu for the chance to experience it, make sure to check it out at rainswepgame.com, uh, information in the description below as always, and yeah, I'm Dust Bunny from Slackers and Cover, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.